Well, hi there, everyone, and welcome to Naturally Recovering Autism. I am your host, Karen Thomas, and this podcast is to help parents of children with autism to find the natural resources necessary to help to recover their children from autism and keep them healthy. And our main subject and our topic today is on water, safe water, because there are so many contaminants, such as heavy metals and other toxins, in our drinking water today. And most people know that, or they don't know that, and they're drinking it, and it can really cause a lot of health um, damage. And children with autism have suppressed immune systems, so they're even more susceptible to those harmful contaminants and toxins. So I have a special guest with us here today who is a water expert, because I know you're reading a lot of different things and hearing a lot of different things, and you don't know what to believe, and you want to know where you can get the best, healthiest water for you and your family. So I have with us today Robert Slovak. He is a degreed mechanical and astronautical engineer, best known as the co-founder with his brother Jack of Water Factory Systems in the early 1970s. He's recognized as one of the key developers of reverse osmosis technology in its numerous applications. After the sale of his company to a multinational leader in water technology in 1990, Robert went on to bring his knowledge and experience to Brazil and other undeveloped nations. During this period, Robert maintained his presence in the American water industry and as a consultant at regular speaker and water technology conferences. Since 2006, Robert masterminded and promoted a new paradigm he refers to as water and wellness, in which pure, contaminant-free water is combined with highly effective nutraceutical additives to support the health needs of a wide diversity of the population, including prenatal, developing, aging, health compromised, and special needs. Currently, Robert's focused on providing presentations and seminars on water and wellness to professional practitioners, consumer health, and compromised health sectors as a featured speaker at conferences throughout the world. So uh, welcome, Robert, and thank you so much for being here today. I know you're a very busy guy. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> So let's dive right in. Um, I know there are a lot of questions that, that uh, people have, especially parents. You want to know how you can keep your family safe and healthy and, um, and how to know if your water is even contaminated. So let's start with what are, what's the biggest consideration when you're choosing a water filtration system for drinking and bathing? And then there's the swimming pool aspect, but I know that that's a, a big elephant all on its own. But yeah, what, what is the first consideration? Well, certainly it's a consideration so big that everyone misses it. And that's to find out what's in your water to begin with. No one, no one seems to bother to do this. It, and it's kind of like going to the doctor and ask them to treat you without finding out what, uh, what you have. So um, this leads to a very high percentage of the population ending up with the wrong thing and taking their neighbor's advice or something they read on the internet that sounded particularly interesting or probably the worst thing is that they buy into some kind of fad. Right. So what, what do they do? What's the right and the real, uh, you know? Okay. So, you know, I, what I tell people to start out. Mm hmm is to simply go to the website of the company, the water supplier you pay your water bill to, okay? And already we, you, you find that there's objections already. You mean I have to work at this? I, I have to do something? Can't just... I have to do something. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and so I suggest hold on. It's not so difficult. And you go to that website, and every town, municipality, city uh, that has uh, greater than 25 people in it uh, must have an EPA water report. They must publish it every year. So you are going to look for this on the website of your water purveyor or supplier that you pay your water bill to, something that leads to the annual water report. And you're going to go on the one, and they don't change radically from year to year. I mean, sometimes they could if they change the water supply, but generally they don't change radically. So 
you just want to find the latest one. And typically, uh, right, if you did it today, you would probably find a 2017 report or possibly they haven't finalized it yet and you may have to resort to a 2016 report. But you want to go on that. Okay. Now, the problem is interpreting that report. And, mm -hmm. and I agree. It, it, it is important. And this is where you need to link up with somebody who understands the report and the information that's on it. And it's a bunch of, you know, names of contaminants that most people have never heard of, most of them, and a bunch of numbers that indicate whether those are those contaminants are excessive or whether they're considered below the health risk zone. So uh, How does one I am trying to, as part of that water and wellness paradigm, this is so new an idea because no one ever asked that, that very critical question. As part of that water and wellness paradigm you mentioned when you were introducing me, I am setting up a kind of service that will be very inexpensive that people, you will send them your water report and someone will look at it and come up with some guidelines for choosing the right direction or the options that you need to go. And there will also be a little questionnaire. For instance, do you want the fluoride out of the water? Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. many municipalities, as you know, Karen, fluoridate. And there's a lot of the population, I don't want to remove that. That's supposed to be good for my children's teeth. And uh, you can maybe, you know, possibly even direct them to where that's discussed because we know that not everyone agrees with that. And uh, if you're the parent of a child with ASD, you might or might have been to a lecture or read that you don't want fluoride in the water. In which case, now you have to choose a water system that can remove fluoride. It's if interesting that fluoride being a neurotoxin have right. you, you know, is something that people put on their toothbrushes and put in their mouth daily and that they really don't realize. Um, I can link in this, uh, on this page where this, the page where this uh, podcast comes out at naturallyrecoveringautism.com, I will um, post a study on um, fluoride, some research, just so people know a little bit more about the background of fluoride and, and the toxic agents in it, because I know people are probably wondering at this point. Um, okay, I'm sorry, go ahead, Robert. Uh, so, um, you know, identifying the contaminants and what ones that uh, you want to get out uh, are an important first step in choosing water purification. And this step, you know, if you're just looking for better tasting water, you, you don't have to do this. I mean, there's many, you can, you can just throw darts and find a system that will increase better tasting water. But I think your audience and certainly my audience are, are, are fairly informed health and wellness interested uh, population. And they want to understand these issues and they want as many uh, contaminants that are identified in the water removed. So um, it, you have to, if, if you're in that category, you have to go and go through this step of seeing what your water is. And the source of water largely determines this. Some people, water comes from a variety of sources, including runoff from the Rocky Mountains, rivers, streams, lakes, ponds, uh, and underground aquifers. So each source has its own characteristic characteristics, its own advantages and disadvantages. And all this kind of is told in the story of an analysis of the water on these reports. Okay. And then, so uh, there's the analysis. You said that you're also setting up a service where people can uh, find out because otherwise they, they really don't know who to. They don't know. So that's something that's going to be on your website and I can link to that as well. At, at, on yes. The so traditionally, traditionally, the American public goes to what we know as the water dealer. Right. Okay. And this water dealer could include, you know, the proverbial Culligan man, 
uh, and uh, people who sell water treatment equipment. And most of those people belong to an organization called the Water Quality Association, or WQA. And they are trained in the basics. And there are a lot of good people. There's a lot of good water dealers. But when you start to have uh, a situation in which the water users have are health compromised, such as autism, immune con immunocompromised people, autism, special needs, etc., people who have diabetes, etc., you are they are not equipped to give good advice in general. There may be a couple in the United States, a handful, but in general, they are not. So um, you'll, I'll link to the source where people can go to your website and find out that information that'll be available. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Because I know that they're saying, okay, well, what do I do once I find that out? Um, and we're going to get to that because I know you've got a great resource that you're going to give us in, uh, here uh, in this episode. Um, people have asked a couple of questions. I wanted to say, why? What about the pH and alkaline versus, you know, uh, mineralizing your water? All of those, yeah. those types of things. You hear a lot of back and forth about those. Oh, things. this is this has haunted me for seven years because a group of us who really know our water chemistry realized that the pH of water is somewhat of an insignificant, um, uh, and in, it's an insignificant parameter in human health. It really, the pH of the water you drink, and this shocks many people, as it did today, I'm at a conference speaking today, and it shocked a number of people who should know better, but the pH of whatever you drink, of the fluid you drink, including water, is irrelevant. And the main reason that's kind of very obvious is the fact that when you drink water, it goes into the stomach and the stomach's pH is somewhere between one and three. So it basically acidifies everything that you put into it. And so if you were to put water at that, if, if you were to put your alkaline water at a pH of say 10, drink it, in, in one second it would be whatever, a pH of three or four, so it would be very acidic. So everything you end up consuming through your stomach is going to be acidified, and it just negates any attempt to have an alkaline solution, meaning the pH is over seven, most usually alkaline means over eight or nine or 10. So it instantly destroys it and the this was i mean it seems like it's almost it was a was a trick and the people who really promoted and developed the alkaline water uh necessity and thinking it had all these health benefits were people who didn't really understand the chemistry of water that well and they latched on to the fact that the higher the pH of the water up to a certain point, that it had the ability when you drank it to neutralize metabolic acidity. So the body makes acid constantly as a consequence of our oxygen metabolism. So we, whenever we move our body, Whenever we do any kind of activity, including thinking, we are making as metabolic acids. And so the body is designed to get rid of them, and it doesn't always do it well enough, so we have to address it. Most of the acidity of the body is actually eliminated by exhaling carbon dioxide. The rest of it has to be handled by the bicarbonate uh, system in the bloodstream. And they thought, the original people thought that by in drinking alkaline water, it would somehow get into the body and assist the body in neutralizing alkaline, assisting, assist the body in uh, neutralizing acidity. And it doesn't at all because the stomach interrupts it and acidifies it. So the alkaline, uh, alkaline buffer system in the body is 
much different than that. And the way it works is to use alkalizing minerals to accomplish the support of neutralizing metabolic acidity. So it's important to have a lot of alkalizing minerals in the diet. And that's where you really get the alkalizing benefit. So like fresh, meat, fresh vegetables are oh, okay. fresh right. vegetables are just abundant in alkalizing minerals, and they are the best uh, at alkalizing. And some people you can use maybe baking soda. Some people alkalize with that, uh, but you really have to have a lot of abundant minerals. These just do not exist in products that are alkaline water. They don't have enough alkalinity in them to be beneficial in controlling metabolic acid. So we just debunk alkaline water as having any health benefit and consider it just a waste of money. And there are so many easier ways to do it. Right, and then there's the, um... Like I know the the quinton minerals of the uh, the seawater. Um. Yeah, the seawater minerals are great. Those are those are while they do provide wonderful alkaline buffering. Okay, uh, the, the 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 best um, uh, benefit of uh, quinton marine plasma is the fact that it contains all the trace elements that are missing now from the soil, and therefore missing from your produce that's the genius so and that's one of the big water additives i'm a proponent of is using uh, minerals harvested from the sea to um, supplement drinking water yeah they're excellent i i've i've had great and for those of your maybe more studious uh your more studious uh audience or are interested in investigating and so on, there is a wonderful presentation that's very new by a professor, August Dunning from Caltech. And he has done a great service to humanity, in my opinion, by producing, I think you can get it on YouTube and probably you can get his actual, I guess it's a PowerPoint presentation. It's brilliant and it just says, we have so demineralized our soil through, through um, poor farming methods that our produce has very few minerals in it. And as a consequence, over the last 75 or 100 years, the uh, mineral deficiency related diseases has skyrocketed. And he puts this all together and his conclusion is a very stark and dismal one that I won't go into. But he said, mankind uh, better start remineralizing the soil. And his preferred method, which he considers the most inexpensive, is actually mixing seawater extracts in with soil of everything that is grown. Very interesting. So I highly advise that YouTube. Okay, and I will, I will find it and link to it again on this page, naturallyrecoveringautism.com, uh, on the podcast page, um, and uh, you can go to naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash water, and um, you can find uh, this post, and I'll link to a couple others I've written as well that have uh, some more helpful information as well. Um, so, uh, Robert, are there certain... Um, other uh, beneficial additives that you would fortify drinking water with, or is that basically? Yeah, I mean, there are, but you know what I'd like to go to is something that gets us the water purifier first kind of thing. That, mm -hmm. that, that, let's see if we can advance the water purifier or, or, or whatever is needed for the home. Let's right. give some options. Um, just because we have a limited time. And then I'd like after the options, it, those kind of determine what additives are realistic for the option of the treatment itself. Okay. So, so one of the things, uh, the, the big picture is that for you and your family, you ideally need 
something for bathing to prevent uh, your exposure to contaminants in the water, and something for drinking. You really need two things. Now, it, the, a large part of the water industry tries to promote that all you need is something to do your whole house, and this takes care of bathing and drinking, and the public loves it. How simple. Sounds reasonable, but it isn't. Because what you use for the whole house to protect you in bathing will never do enough to protect somebody, certainly someone that's health compromised, for their drinking water. Drinking, when you drink water, it's a much more serious and important fluid than what you bathe in. Okay? You don't have to you're not so susceptible to contaminants in bathing as you would be in drinking. So we have to think of doing the household in two parts, something for the bathing, something for the drinking water. And the bathing, typically, a probably most people will find that a basic, uh, sufficiently sized, activated carbon filter is what you want to use. However, if you were to call a local water dealer, you would likely get the wrong water filter if you wanted to truly protect your family. So it is very common, probably 95%, maybe more, of all filters that you would just buy from, from a supplier in your town or on the internet would be a backwashing carbon filter, and I do not advise this. You want for your home, you want only to use a specialized carbon block filter system that has no backwashing at all for the media, that the media is fixed and solid. And some of you, your audience may know a carbon block filter because most filters today used for drinking water are like a solid cylinder of carbon that's fused together. Are you familiar with it, Karen? That's fused together. I, I have one that has multiple carbon filters in it, but if okay. it's fused together, I am not sure. Well, no, I mean, you may not have seen the element itself inside. You're, you're looking at the outside. Right. But most carbon filters, if you were to cut it open, uh, you would see a solid black cylinder with a hole through the middle. And this would be called a carbon block. And it's a very effective way of utilizing carbon. So, but most of, most of these are whatever. They're just two inches in diameter and 10 inches long. Okay? Right. But one that would do a whole house, they are very rare. and Virtually no dealers sell them because uh, they prefer to sell a much more expense, expensive looking device. It's just part of our, our commerce system. So, but the most effective are large carbon blocks that are uh, not two inches in diameter, but eight inches in diameter and not 10 inches long but 40 inches long, and these are capable of doing your entire house. So I'm going to put a stake in the ground that that is the best approach to treating water for your whole house bathing and protecting your family from contaminants, as good as could be done, practically speaking. Do you have one of those on your website? I know we're gonna we're gonna talk about something else. No, but it but it is in it, it's it's not easy to get them. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry to say, and that's part of again the water and wellness paradigm that's coming up because these things have been kind of held back from the public, and uh, so we want to correct that. But it will be in the presentation that I think you're going to. Um, get and publish also, like the PowerPoint? Yes, I uh, just, so for those of you listening, Robert is going to give me a, uh, a presentation he's done that was 
uh, very detailed. Um, we're going to condense it so it's a little easier for everybody to see. But um, at this page, naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash water, I will uh, give the, um, the link where you can get that presentation and see the rest of of the material because of course there's lots of depth that we can get into with water and um, we don't have as much time to do it here but you will be able to get that link on that page on my website so you can go there to find it so i i want to i want you to know uh, that not everyone needs this this really is for municipal water supplies that add chemicals and 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 they have trihalomethanes in it a lot of bad stuff. Now, if you live out in, you know, in the wilderness in the Rocky Mountains and, you know, water's coming down into a pond and coming right to your house and there's, you don't even have anybody that supplies you with the water, you don't need this, okay? So you may need some basic filtration and that's always good, but you don't have any chemicals in the water to begin with. So I want to put that kind of caveat in there. Not everybody needs this. This is for water that I guess probably most of us are subject to by living in the industrial world. Is there a but, simple way for people to, to test? No, there isn't, but that's where, oh, okay, so good question. So for your municipal water, that report will tell me everything I need to know. Okay. And it will, it will I guess, qualify, hey, do I really need this? Uh, and I, most of the time I will say, yes, you do for city water okay now if somebody comes to me and said well we live up in the rocky mountains and so on and so on but we don't know anything about the water or we live out in the country and you know it's kind of nice and the water tastes good well and they say well how, how do we test it that's where i will say if you're really serious especially if somebody in your home has uh, you know is has some kind of chronic disease or is comprom health compromised then i will tell them you can get a very uh, a very responsible water test from national testing laboratories. And, and this is, you can look it up on the internet, and it also has a website called watercheck.com. Pretty easy. Okay, and I will link to those as well on this. Yeah, page. and that, that, that is a company that's been around oh, I, I, close to 50 years, and I, I, they're probably like the General Motors of water testing. Uh, you know, you, you shouldn't have to test your municipal water. There's enough in the report, okay? Okay. So, but those of you who don't have any, you're not paying anybody for water, then doing a test is very good. And these tests have, there's a, a menu of tests. You know, you can test for, you, you can just check off. Okay, I want heavy metals. I want uh, synthetic organic chemicals. I want microbial measurement. So it's a menu and the more you check off, the more it costs to do it. I, I would say water test responsible, complete water testing is probably never less than $200 and perhaps as much as 500 right. to do the best. Okay. okay? And let's definitely, I know you're really excited about something that has been in the works for many, many years. And your, um, you know, your expertise has shown you that you even, I know, had to kind of clarify it with the company, make sure that they, they missed some little snafu piece and you send it back seeing that. And now you've found a filter or, or you have a filter that um, we will link to for sure that you said it's a countertop filter and it's absolutely the best you've ever seen. Yes, as one of the developers of reverse osmosis, um, I, I have, uh, when I became more involved in medicine and health and, and, and disease as a result of contaminants, um, I was always concerned, and, and this was really, it really hit me when I started to speak at autism conferences. And I realized, wow, you know, when I started in reverse osmosis in the 70s. You, you, you never heard the word, uh, my children have gut problems, okay? Right. So it just didn't exist. No one thought about the gut uh, in the 70s. So um, as this became more of a reality, I, I realized that conventional under sink 
reverse osmosis systems, which have become extremely popular and can be bought anywhere from the water dealer to the internet to Home Depot, you name it. I realized that these, this design, which I am a big uh, part of, is not adequate, uh, does not produce adequate water for people, especially who are gut compromised. And the reason is that the storage tanks used for these systems, and those of you who own them realize or can think easily identify if you open your sink and you have one of these, you can see a, whatever, a, a fairly large blue, white, or black, or some colored tank under there. You probably don't know what it does, and you probably think it's a filter, but it's a storage tank. And RO systems have, uh, have evolved over the time in which the sales the, the the sales promotional lingo exceeded the responsibility factor and they wanted to just make as much water as possible and go to your house and say ma'am this will make 50 gallons a day and 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 you're going wow that's a lot of water we, we can always we'll never run out and so on but what they didn't realize is that you really never use 50 gallons a day maybe you use five at the most and this tank never gets emptied. And the tank that never gets emptied that's sealed under your sink becomes a microbial incubator and bacteria grows to way too high numbers to be comfortable for people who have health conditions. Right. So I battled with this. And as I spoke, I would say those of you who have such a system here was my advice, and this is great to have the opportunity to say this. Number one, if you have such a system, first, it was probably never sanitized to begin with, which it should have been. And I'm, I wrote the only book on the subject in 1991, and I insisted that the entire industry sanitize the storage tank before it is installed. And if you ask me, certainly less than 15%, of water dealers do this and then i said that uh you had to every time you change the filters you have to re-sanitize it and i gave the methodology of doing it again probably less than 15 percent of the cases do it so now i'm sitting with the, a group of people who have water systems and they have maybe a child with gut problems or an elderly person who's not uh who has a chronic disease and I tell them, here's what you have to do. You have to drain this tank four times a week, at least. Drain it at the end of the day. Pick out four days you can do every other day. Drain it until no water comes out. Now you've gotten rid of water, some of which it could have been in there for months. So you've greatly lowered the microbial count just by doing that. And by the morning, it's going to be filled again. And I tell them that, you know, two days later, drain it again. I, I go so far and the serious, the problem is serious enough that I tell those mothers that you must sterilize the water for your child if they have serious gut issues. Uh, so if they do, I recommend buying a product called a SteriPen and it's very famous. It's in, you can buy it in camping stores. You can buy it on amazon.com for whatever, 60 to $70. And this is a pen that has a little, it's like a big magic marker. And uh, you, 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 you take the cover off and it has an ultraviolet lamp in it. And you just press the button and put it in the water up to a liter. You can do a glass of water or a liter of water. You just put it in and this lamp glows and it kills all the microorganisms and then it goes off automatically. And then you can give that to your child with gut problems. And that's, you know, that's how serious it is. But I, I, I implore parents to, to do that for their children if they have such a system. So every year I would have to go through this, but I finally found a system and, and am now promoting the system that has no issue with microbial overgrowth. And this system is an AquaTrue system, and it's now been very refined. It fits on the counter. There is no water connection. And Karen, I don't know if you, if you know that I used to make a system just for children with autism that had no storage tank. 
I did not know that. And, and it was called the purest, and many people still have them. And it, but it required hooking up to faucets. Okay. Oh, yes. I do know what you're talking about. Yes, yes. And, and um, yeah. it was great for a while, but faucets became so exotic, mm -hmm. you could no longer hook up to them with these little connector, connectors. So exactly. I just, I had to take it off the market because too many people said, there's no way to hook it up. Mm -hmm. So I said, oh my God, I was back in my depressed state again, <laughs> trying to figure out what to do. And then, then AquaTrue came along and I said, this is exactly what health and wellness minded people must have. And it doesn't require a connection to water, which was brilliant. It it's amazing. requires electricity and you, you, you have a convenient container on it that you fill with water. You can even remove it and take it over to the sink and fill it in three seconds and put it back on and it starts automatically. And the RO, the four stage RO system takes that water in that container and processes it and it, an award winning efficiency. And it fills another container uh, that is, that stores the RO water. Now at the end, in 15 minutes, you have three liters of perfectly treated RO activated carbon water. And uh, no storage and no dumping out and waste, no. Exactly, contaminant free, microbial free, etc. And then you can take your, your Canton Marine Plasma, if that's your choice. You could take, um, you could take something like Celtic Sea Salt, but I don't recommend putting it in the, in the, the, the pure water reservoir because it has, too many insoluble elements in it, and they just kind of may, may just glunk up the bottom too much. But the King Tone is the perfect thing. You just dump it in, and now you've remineralized and trace mineralized the water. And, you know, the unit is simply a beautiful, it's a beautiful, master, masterful design. Uh, I sometimes tell people, if Apple if Apple Computer was in the water purification business, this would be the product they designed. Because people do wonder, well, how big is it if it's going to sit on my countertop? Is it going to be intrusive and things like that? No, it really isn't. And you, the point is because you don't have to hook it up to water, really. So many, I mean, I, I was just at another event and like three people owned them and said, oh, I have mine on top of my washing machine. I have mine in my bathroom. I have mine in, on, my, on my wet bar. So you can put it anywhere. because fill you, it with you just, water then. You just have to get water to it. That, ah, without running it it's brilliant. stupid. So some people, some people have given these away to their children going to college because you can just stick it in a college room. Yep, absolutely. They just go get water and put it on. Right, from the bad faucet, like down in the dorm bathroom, and fill it up, and then you bring it back, and it, you it, got it. completely cleans it up for you. And you know, your you kids are drinking. Unless you're going to Harvard, and I think they have faucets in the, in the dorm. <laughs> For those, of, for those going to Harvard, they don't have to walk down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> one thing while you're at it, one thing while you're at it now, um, is, is I'm, you of course are very familiar with the glyphosate. Yes. Issue. And I'll link uh, to a, a podcast I have on that for those who aren't familiar with it now. As it stands right now in the technological realm, the only effective way of removing glyphosate from water, because you know it's showing up in almost every water supply, to my dismay, I mean, I can't even believe this is happening. Yeah. But uh, glyphosate, we, it, it, the only reasonable technology to remove it is reverse osmosis. So this does work to reverse, to get out? Well, let me say that there is no organization that tests it. Mm -hmm. It's just been determined, like in labs, yes, glyphosate can be removed. But we, we are in the process of testing this system for absolute glyphosate removal. So I'm very confident it will remove it. But I'm just telling you that that's in progress. It'll be the first, uh, to the best of my knowledge, the first system that ever could claim glyphosate removal. Oh, that's amazing. I mean, that is so huge these days. And there are studies now showing that it is contributing to 
autism, the development, right. and the, the, you know, the prevalence of autism. So um, to have that taken out of our water, because I know glyphosate is water soluble, so it doesn't just vanish in water, it holds on to it. So you got it. I, I have a quick question on uh, radiation too. Am I preventing you from asking questions? Am I talking too much? No, 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 we're great. I just was curious because um, the glyphosate thing is such a big deal. I mean, that is so fabulous to know that honestly, um, because I know it is water soluble and it's very hard to get rid of. Um, so that alone is huge. Um, I, I was wondering about, uh, just out of curiosity, radiation, filtering radiation out of water? You know anything yes. About? Well, let's talk about that because it's your your intention is good, but you're just using the wrong word. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So radiation are the actual rays that hit you from something. You want to use the word radionuclides. Okay. Okay. So I mean, it's a it's a it's a thin line there, but but the radiation. So if something is radioactive, okay. It would be like it, it would be like a mineral, like cesium or iodine atom, and it just happens to be an unstable isotope that gives off alpha, beta, gamma rays. And that's what does the damage. So those things are called radionuclides, and they're just like minerals in the water. And RO would remove radionuclides from the water uh, virtually completely. Wow, that's amazing, especially uh, for you know some of the places that have had leakage and fallout and uh, just you know the nature of basically the, exactly. the planet Earth today. Wow, wow, that's fascinating. And I want to remind you, I I am also a fan of uh, to be fair to everyone and to my fellow industry members that distillation plus activated carbon is just as effective. Maybe there's some little things, one is a little better than the other, a little bit, but basically distillation plus activated carbon equals reverse osmosis plus activated carbon. They're both the top tier of removing contaminants to water, from water, and, and really nothing is close to those two methodologies. In, in, in removing the entire spectrum of uh, contaminants, including what's showing up in the water, pharmaceuticals, of course. Right. Um, personal care products, such as cosmetics, hand cream, all of that stuff is getting into water supplies, partly because we are recycling water, correct? Right. We are taking the sewage that contains all that stuff and we are reusing it. And uh, I happen to leave, live in a community, Orange County, California, that has the largest recycling plant of, uh, of, of sewer water of anybody in the world, really. Wow. And those affect their endocrine disruptors. The, they really affect a, a lot of the hormone levels, metabolism, and so many other harmful health effects that can happen from- Absolutely. And, um, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're looking at RO plus activated carbon and distillation plus activated carbon remove virtually everything that you could throw at them. Now, there are excellent just carbon filters. Don't get me wrong. Most don't remove fluoride. Most don't remove heavy metals. Um, most would not remove microbes to a large extent. Most wouldn't get pharmaceutical. All the, they would get some of the pharmaceuticals, but not all of them. Um, none would get radioactivity in the water, but you also may not have that in the water. Okay, I want to be fair to that category because there's some great ones. Uh, some of the great ones are the Berkey. Um, that that then the in fact the Berkey actually can remove some 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 uh, heavy metals from the water, uh, and it has an it does actually offer an optional filter that I do disagree with, that removes fluoride from the water. 
And I do not agree with the technology they use to consistently remove fluoride, but uh, you know, it's, it's an excellent filter nonetheless. And you know, Amway makes great filters. Water Chef makes great carbon block filters. And in many cases, this is sufficient, especially for somebody who really doesn't, who lives in a great water area and doesn't have any health compromised people. I'm really speaking to you. Um, we're, we're kind of, you and I are focusing on the situation where we, there's some kind of health compromised individual that's this water is going to be used for. Right. So I'm, I'm like going to, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm picking the best way to go. Yeah, absolutely. Somebody asked about Kangen. Have you heard about Kangen filters at all? Well, of course. Well, Kangen is just what we talked about in the beginning. Kangen is really one of the, the you know, the grand puba of alkaline water, mm. which I greatly disagree with. Okay. So now these alkaline ionizers, there's quite a few out there and, and they've been very popular. And, it, and it's, you know, I consider them more of a fad very little science, uh, very good science behind it. And they don't have great filters in them, okay? They're very weak in removing contaminants. But they kind of do like, well, it's not about the contaminants, it's really about this alkaline water that's gonna make you healthy. And as I said, when you make alkaline water with, at a high pH and you drink it, you, you neutralize the pH, you, you actually acidify it instantly. So it's a more, um, I, 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 call it, I, I call it a scientific misconception because they didn't understand, the people who created these systems didn't really understand it. If you want to give another reference that explains this in excruciating detail, go to the website of brilliant Tyler LeBaron, okay? Tyler LeBaron, L-E-B-A-R-O-N. And he has a website uh, called molecularhydrogeninstitute.com. And I'm going to explain this unless, unless you're running out of time. No, I was more concerned about your time. Are you okay? No, I'm on a roll now. <laughs> <laughs> so Tyler LeBaron is a brilliant biochemist and physiologist at 28 years old, okay? And um, he had, on his website, he, he, he's explored alkaline water systems and along with me uh, debunked them as not having significance in, in human health. So he discusses this on his website and explains why and how, et cetera, et cetera. So if you really wanna know, that's it. Uh, that's the place to get it. However, now here's the connection. It has been discovered or some years ago when the alkaline water industry, we'll call it, uh, was, um, oh, and, and these machines use electrolysis to make the alkaline water. That's very important that you understand it uses an electrical cell to separate components in the water into an alkaline water and an acidic water. And you can use the acidic water to like clean your, your sink or something, okay? So, but the alkaline water is the one that people focus on for health. It is known that this electrolytic cell also makes some hydrogen gas in the process but no one paid attention to it at first. Because when I speak to doctors and I tell them what I am telling you and your audience, well, alkaline water doesn't have any really health benefits and uh, uh, because pH isn't a meaningful factor in drinking water. Some people, some doctors would say, you know, I, 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 I really question that Mr. Slovak because some people like really responded to and got health benefits from the alkaline water. And I say, and here's why. Because especially when an alkaline ionizer is new, or it's specially designed to do this, what I'm about to tell you, is that it's 
it can make hydrogen gas and hydrogen gas has been shown to be a health enhancing nutrient. No one would ever have guessed it because it's almost like an inert gas, you know, it doesn't react with many things. And this is the molecular gas, H2, okay? It's not like that reactive. So, but when you dissolve hydrogen in water, you get a therapeutic effect that is profound and related to many health conditions. And you can read about this also on Tyler LeBaron's website. It's very interesting. So we also, as when, now that we, we kind of breached the additive topic, we also make, and I, I won't belabor this, we also make and we're the originators of a tablet that you can put into your pure water, uh, your pure RO water, that generates a super saturated solution of hydrogen gas. I and remember this. You still, you still sell those, don't you? Of course. We, we like make seven, seven brands of it. Right. And so, and it's still necessary to put this in with this RO filter that, that you... Well, you don't have to use it. It's just a neat way to do it because you have such pure water and now you're putting, you know, pure hydrogen in it. And it's, it's just a great combination. So, you know, doing the minerals, from the King Tong minerals or um, a high quality sea salt like Celtic, uh, the hydrogen, now hydrogen isn't something you just put in every time you have a glass of water like minerals. Hydrogen is something that, you know, do I need hydrogen? Do I need more energy? Do I have an oxidative stress? Uh, do I have a health condition? Uh, it's, it's profound in some of the things that it helps people with. Uh, I'm not, of course, at liberty to discuss the health uh, doctor's aspect of these, but there's so much written on it. It's really become almost, in a very short number of years, five years, it's become one of the most in-demand nutraceutical products, molecular hydrogen. And, and so these alkaline ionizers, like the Kangen, would make a small amount of hydrogen, not like what one of these tablets makes, maybe a, maybe a tenth of it. But any amount of hydrogen can have some benefit. So people early on were going, yeah, that alkaline water is good, but it wasn't the alkalinity, it wasn't the alkaline pH at all. It was really the hydrogen. Mm. The unfortunate thing is that they lose the capacity or many devices lose the capacity lose the capacity because of something that happens in the cell. I won't get into this, but it loses the capacity to make the hydrogen. So it's just one of the disadvantages of using that method. It's much more efficient to put a tablet in your water. And you don't even have to put the tablet in the water. You can put the tablet in iced tea or some cool and this is an issue too. It comes up a lot with autism or people with compromised immune systems. Oh yes, because children with autism are are, are very subjected to ox high levels of oxidative stress, and oxidative stress is kind of like another word for free radical. It's another word for inflammation, etc. So it's really the result of free radical activity that's out of control, and you know this is like one of the signatures of children with autism. And they're so, drinking a lot of water sometimes. People are really thirsty, but they're finding that they're really just still dehydrated it's because the, the water's not getting into the cells. Is that, is that right? I mean, these, this constant lack of hydration, even, even for people who are drinking a lot of water or they're thirsty yeah. all the time. Well, you're right. But, but the, 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 driver, the driver for getting water into cells is, is, is the quintone. The, the, the minerals and trace elements are the driver. That is, and, and think of it this way, the proverbial Gatorade electrolyte for athletes who are going through water at like a liter an hour, you know, though Gatorade has, for instance, uh, I think six electrolytes in it. And it's electrolytes are the same, is another word for minerals, okay? So, and, and they're just specific ones, that's all. So the electrolytes are what drive water, cause the, wa the cells to take on water. 
So electrolytes are important, and that's what made Gatorade famous and so on. But, you know, Gatorade also puts sugar in it, and that kind of negates it a little bit. Food coloring, but, yeah. Yeah, so well, we're, I'm not advocating Gatorade at all. But <laughs> ketone, ketone marine plasma, uh, minerals and trace elements, this is the ultimate driver to hydrate the cell. And ketone recently came, you know, this is the first time I'm even saying this because it's not even in the United States yet, but ketone is, uh, it just came out with a, like a professional athlete's electrolyte because ketone has like 74 electrolytes in it, not six, 74. So it, it's, it's, um, it's, and it's called totem, T-O-T-U-M, which in Latin means total. And it's the new, it's like, you know, in Europe, it's, it's really taking the European athletes uh, by storm by being the best electrolyte that has ever been made. And the ketone is really just a version or the, it's a version of, uh, uh, of, the, of the ketone marine plasma. So all you have to do if you want to, to hydrate, you, the ketone is the way to go. Yeah. Absolutely. Adding and, it to your water. Mm -hmm. And how much a day? One, because they come in those vials? Well, or? there's many ways to, so we suggest, now this is really in the advanced course, but we're going to just dabble into it. We do suggest in one, now if we're talking about our new water purification unit, okay, the Aqua True that I discussed, it makes three liters of water at a time, Okay. So we do suggest putting a structuring amount of ketone in, which is one 10 milliliter vial, okay? Per day? Um, not per day, but just per batch. Okay. Yeah, so, so you're, you know, you, you, maybe you'll go through, you know, nine liters of water per day. I, I, I don't know, but you each, each batch is about three liters. So you put one in per three liters. Now, if you really are, in the health uh, compromised state or you're high activity person and you play tennis and you run and you jog and you do marathons, then you individually should use the ketone. And the one that you should individually use the ketone like by an ampule at a time, okay? In other words, you might before before a race, before an Ironman, you might take two ampules, two 10 milliliter ampules of the ketone or put them in a liter of water. And there's isotonic and hypertonic. Yes. And you always, you never would, isotonic is kind of a medicine and, and, and is, is at another level. Uh, it, it, isotonic would be, let's say, better off in the hands of a doctor who's treating you for something. And the hypertonic, the hypertonic would be the one you add to a solution of water, or you know you can put it in anything really, iced tea if you want. The daily one, you wouldn't get too much of it or worry about that at all. Like, never, like, never, 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 never. Perfect. Yeah. I'm Remember, sure. you were born in the ocean. Right. Yeah. Our species, yeah. life came from the ocean, Karen. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Finding, uh, I live in a place that's, you know, miles from, uh, 20 miles from the ocean, and they're finding, still finding whale bones uh, in the ground, you know. It's, wow. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of cool. There's a winery near me called Whale Bone, and um, because they <laughs> found an entire whale bone, and they're 20 miles in from the ocean. Oh, uh, well, yeah. you know, I, I didn't want to go this far, but you know, there was a time 4.5 billion years ago that there was no land. It was entirely covered by the ocean. And the ocean was created by a, lar a hundred million years of being bombarded by comets, which were two thirds ice. That's how it got on earth. Hmm. Maybe I'm giving you too much information. <laughs> That's a new one on me, I will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap up. You have been okay. fabulous. You've given us a, so much of your time and you're so knowledgeable, Robert. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm sure all of the parents and practitioners and people out there listening will find so much value in this as well, because it is water just seems to be that 
that mystery that people are always trying to find the truth around and want to, but don't know what to do. So yes. I am going to link uh, on this page to your Aqua True filter. And I'm also going to give a discount code for anybody who goes cool. to that, that page. Yes, they will. And that discount is ongoing. So if you go to naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash water, you will go to this, uh, the page where uh, this podcast will be released and um, you will uh, be able to um, get all of the a link to the things that we talked about and to this filter, the Aqua True, and give you that discount code. So you can get all of it in one place, make it simple for you. And um, I hope this was helpful to everybody. And again, thank you, Robert, so much for being here. Really, really appreciate your help. You're very welcome, Karen. All right. And you take thank care. You. All right. Have a good trip. Thanks. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>